decided to make myself a little inchy booklet. For the last 12 months or so I've been uh, each week producing an inchy for the Every Inchy Monday Challenge which is a wonderful group and last year was all animals. I ended up putting all of those uh, inches into frames but this year I thought I'm just going to make myself a little book I'm not going to make them as dimensional I'm going to make myself a little uh, little book to put them in and for example here's the first one which was the Netherlands and that came was made on the first of the first so each Monday of the year I produce an inchy according to the list of um, prompts and it's interesting having a country as a prompt because, gosh, you know, you've, the world's your oyster. Anything to do with that country can prompt the the production of the inchy. And it's interesting to see all the different things that people come up with. Um, but for this one, I just did a watercolour of some little little tulips. And to house these, and I thought I'd try and put some of the language behind each of them where that's possible. Um, just for a bit of interest and then put two to a page like so. So this is my page for my little journal. So two on each page. So I went through my paper scraps and pulled out seven pieces of scrap paper. They're not all identical colours. Some of them are more creamy than white. Doesn't matter um, as long as they were big enough. And these are eight by six and scored at four. They're all approximately the same weight which just to give me a nice firm page to attach my inches to. And I'm going to bind these or stitch these into some binding and have them in my little book so that each week I can just adhere the new inchy in. So that's the plan. That's the pages. I have cut out here. I'm going to use um, book cloth because I've got plenty of that that I need to use up. I'm going to use some PVA glue which I find is the best and I'm using some recycled cereal box for the spine piece and the front and back cover and I'm just going to glue those down onto the cover and let it dry and I'll decorate the front in due course. And for inside, the internal piece, which I'm going to do a, a hidden spine, um, I've cut an internal spine piece, which is about an eighth of an inch less wide than the back spine. And of course, this piece is the length of the page. And so this is going to go be glued onto the internal piece and I will stitch my pages on it and then this will be adhered to the inside of the cover once I get that nice and dry and finished off. So I'm just going to go ahead and adhere that down like so. It's a little bit longer at the moment but I'll trim that off when, when it's dry. I've also made, using my Tim Holtz ruler, um, my guidelines for punching the holes for the sewing in the pages. So three spaced, evenly spaced lines so that I can punch my holes through this once it's all dry. And then I'll be able to sew my pages in. But I'll show you more of that after. Firstly, I'm just going to adhere these pieces down in the normal fashion. fashion using my PVA, a good quality PVA glue. Um, that's probably all I need to tell you. That's um, the basics of all I'm doing. And I think what I'll do is I'll stop talking, I'll put some music and I'll speed this up so that you don't need to see me take every, every step on the way because it could be a, a fairly long video if I did that. Um, I've had several um, comments in my when I first started recording about the the quality of the video the quality of the lighting the fact that people can't hear me very easily and all of those sorts of things and I would just ask people to perhaps look at the date of it it was 
amongst my first um, there's a million other videos out there I really don't feel like repeating it and remaking it but basically since that time anyway I have moved on a bit in my process I tend to like to use book cloth or calico more for my covers simply because it reduces the amount of bulk that's inside when you're folding it increases the strength out of proportion you know you can use all sorts of things but I've found this is a really simple process for getting a sturdy neat and not too bulky book cover hope you can't hear the dogs next door they're playing and making quite a noise anyway I'll get on with the process oh I should just say that when I make my my guidelines for the holes for the spine for sewing I use my Tim Holtz order because I find that is the simplest way to to get everything centered it saves me having to calculate anything I just lay it down and and mark the pages and then draw the lines and it's a very very simple way to do it um, I had to buy myself a new one because look what happened to my old one I had some adhesive on it and I cleaned the back where the the um, it was starting to wear anyway because I've used it such a lot but I rubbed it with some orange adhesive remover and of course it took the the markings off so there's a little tip for you I still use it all the time for the straight edge and for some basic straight edges and ruling and things but I keep my new one um, out of the way of all adhesives uh, for using for doing something like this where you want precise measurements and straight lines and things because it just saves you having to try and calculate that um, so that's just a tip and I'll get on with making this and if I need to stop and say something I'll do that otherwise I'll just have some music and speed it up so you can not get too bored with the process which is pretty ho-hum unless you haven't seen it before and then of course you need to see it all I think I'll take the top of that off so I can get good access to the glue one thing when you're putting adhesive on something like fabric it's not so bad with the book cloth which is a fairly sturdy and is coated but particularly if you're using calico or other fabrics and you're adhering down you need to get an even coat all over the not just around the edges don't just use tape around the edges put your adhesive all over it um, it's the only way to get a neat finish on the outside once it's dry so I'll get cracking and I'll talk to you soon.
there we go they're both adhered and as soon as these are dry I'll be moving on with sewing in the pages and I'll see you then well here we are the two pieces are nice and dry this is the inside spine and I've added my um, I've added the little piece that will allow me show me where to poke my holes so I'll do that in a minute for this one it's nice and dry nice and flat the only thing I can do with this is to just reinforce on the scoreboard those fold lines and that's not required it's just purely cosmetic it just helps um, put a little groove there so that when they fold they fold neatly and that's all I need to do to that that's ready now waiting for me to adhere the um, the spine and the pages in the inside spine you can see there I've got a nice gap on this side and on this side it's not quite such a nice gap and so that's a little a little tight that that part but I'll use that as the front and that as the back just something to watch that you do leave enough gap there's enough there for it to be okay now to do this little bit I just need to poke holes through and I've got that on the what will be the outside of the inner spine and I poke the holes from the outside through to the side that will be seen to the inside the side that won't be seen if I was poking holes in the spine part if I was stitching it and having exposed stitching on the spine I would poke them from the outside in I really like the holes to be hidden um, those little divots that punching the holes poking the holes makes now to make these row I've got to make seven holes in three different I'm just going to use a three three stitch the small pages is not going to be anything terribly weighty so I'm just going to put the three. So I've centered this little strip between the end because I've got to trim the ends off this. Um, just making sure that the ends of this little strip are about even. Now I can go through and just poke this through using my old phone book and taking care that I position those as accurately as I can. Of course because I am not you won't be seeing any of the stitching you know I really could just do it by by guess I don't really need to um, have it looking terribly cosmetically accurate however I do want the pages to sit nice and flat and straight and it just goes against the grain for me to have them higgledy piggledy and all over the place. I'd rather measure them and have them as accurate as possible, even when I can't see them. So there we are. That's those all done. I might have to go through and repoke some of those, but I'll check that before I do. And you can see there the sort of divot that you get on the wrong side. So that's better to have out of sight. That piece can come off now because the holes are nice and clear. And if I need to make them, actually this, this pokey tool is a little thick. Um, what I might do is use this one which is perhaps a little thinner or I could just use one of the needles which I might just use that. To go through and make sure that the needle goes through 
comfortably. I don't particularly want that one there's a bit tight for example. So now I know the needle will go through and it look a bit close. And you can see that they're not dead straight because I didn't take the time to ensure that this was perfectly accurate. But they're straight enough to give me straight straight pages once I stitch them in. Now the pages are the next thing to do. I need to punch the holes in each of the seven pages so that they line up with the holes there. And to do that I've got another little scrap piece of paper here which I will lay along that centre line, doesn't matter which line it is, again making sure that the top and the bottom are equidistance. And all I need to do with this is mark those three, three holes on this little proforma and this is the exact size of my page. So that when I lay this into my pages and to do that I need to open the old phone book before I do that I'll just go through and add those holes along the centre fold then I can just simply take each of my pages lay them into the fold of the phone book and put in the little proforma with its holes poked through making sure that it's neatly aligned top and bottom. All I then have to do is push down into the fold of the phone book through each of those three holes. And now that page is hole punched and ready to stitch. I'll do that for the other seven in a moment, but in the meanwhile I'll just get my thread, I've got a, it's like a buttonhole twist, just perfectly plain, I don't need anything fancy for this. The pages are quite small but I'll take a fair bit so that I don't have to keep re-threading my, my needle and which needle was I using that one? Just thread the needle and I'm ready to go once I've finished punching the rest of these. So I'll do that and I'll be back with you shortly. Just going to trim this inside panel. Using the rotary trimmer, which is generally more effective for anything cloth related. Now, starting from the outside of this, I'm going to start to sew my pages in, and I'll just show you a couple because this is a hidden spine I'm going to start from the inside because that's going to be hidden in the covers between the covers Making sure just to line those holes up to the 
corresponding holes on the on the spine then go right up to the top so, so I could have done rather more holes um, but don't really see the need seeing as these are such tiny pages you need to just reinforce and back out that centre hole checking that I've got it in the right one and checking that I'm not splitting the stitch and that I've got a stitch on each side of that continuing thread that goes from the top to the bottom have a thread on either side you just need enough to be able to tie that off comfortably I generally do a double double knot to start with and that can be trimmed off there is our first page in the book so I'll just go on and put the rest of the pages I hope you can see I hope that wasn't off the agenda I might just do the second one make sure I'm actually in the screen sometimes I get carried away and forget about these niceties that you don't pull the little tabs through at the end and back out the top and through the page <coughs> looks like it's going to pull through just pull it back so you've got enough and then back through the center, through the center, and make sure you're not splitting the stitch, and that your needle is again on either side of the center string. Pull that fairly firm, you don't want it to tear the page or the spine. two pages in. I'll get those finished and be back when we're ready to paste it into into our cover. All the pages are now sewn in onto the internal spine and covers. I'm just going to trim these a little so they don't add too much bulk behind behind that little piece taking care of course not to snip the, the actual pieces of the holding it into the there that 
just to reduce that bulk a little. And I think I'll just open it up and I think I'll put a piece of adhesive tape down there again to hold it together and to help with the initial seal. It's certainly not crucial to do that but um, I think anything that can add a little bit more security to these journals is has to be a good thing. Without adding bulk, that is, you, you don't want to put anything that's going to create bulk, of course. we need to do is work out the center and what I might do just to give me a visual aid is put a little dot here I'll use my new Tim Holtz and I'll come down a little bit I just want to get a center point I don't want to put it where it'll show, but I just want a little visual marker. Uh, just to help me align those a little. use my 450 adhesive just for this part of the spine. Now the things that I have to remember when I'm putting this on is not only center it to the center of the um, spine but also top and bottom. The distance between there and there has to be as close as you can get it. So I'll just put the This is very strong adhesive, the 450 Helmar. You know you're going to get a good. And I'm just putting that over the spine piece. Well, I don't want it oozing out. I want to make sure that piece is adhered down and you can go right to the edge of that because you know this little spine here is an eighth of an inch on both sides uh, shorter than the other side I'll just find the centre which is that one it's actually inside on that side and just inside on that side. So that's looking pretty good. I'll go through with my bone folder between each of those pages. Just to reinforce the adhesion ok 
getting things nicely centered and straight for me it was it's probably not perfectly straight but close enough I know it was my biggest challenge when I first started because it it truly does make uh, a vast difference and you can see there it doesn't look too bad now all I have to do is to actually adhere these flaps both front and back firmly to the front and back inside covers I've still got a bit of a raw edge here and here where I tore the book cloth with two size but I do intend pasting a mat over both of these and maybe adding a pocket but you can see how nice and flat because the pages are just single sheets of cardstock you can see how nice and flat they lay and there is room even though the inches won't be in this case very dimensional this year last year I did some sewn ones and some quite dimensional ones I had to get a, a, a like a shadow box sort of a frame to fit them in but this year I intend doing them much flatter so I'll just get busy with the I think I'll use the um, silicon again it's the one I prefer to use the, oh, sorry, not silicon PVA glue it's the one I prefer for somehow I think I have managed to adhere up the opening let me just see well, maybe it's going to work I'll have to clear that nozzle out after I've done this should have done it first it's uh, not ideal these little silicon spreaders are excellent for evening out the adhesion the adhesive I'm getting my words rather confused today. It's, uh, it's quite warm. I'll blame the weather. I'll just put a little dab under that corner. Make sure it adheres. Nozzle is definitely blocked. However, that side is pretty well done. Once I've finished this other side, I'm going to pop it under my Webster. My Webster dictionary my daughter bought me is the perfect solution for getting things flattened. are treat every time. to let that you saw it wrinkling when I went to bend it I will let that have I got the center no that's the center I'll take that and put it under the Webster and bring it back and show you how it looks 
once I've got the next stage and I'll get the mats and things done so that we can go straight on and start to finish this off. Well here we are, I'm back. I've picked out a couple of um, pages from, I've got uh, quite a stack here of old Folio Society diaries. Um, I've pulled all of the photo pages out, That's several years there you can see there's calendars and things and I've picked out a couple of appropriate ones and cut them to size and I thought seeing as the end is going to be Christmas once more this holly one would do the job for the last of it and as the Netherlands were was the first one the first of the year I thought the tulip illustration was perfect for that too because I've, I've sort of got in my head that I think this is going to be a floral year it was all animals last year and it's countries this year but I'm thinking if we have to pick an aspect of the country then I'd quite like that aspect to be something floral that's endemic to that country because I'm quite determined to do a bit more drawing and watercolouring this year last year I did all sorts of techniques from stitching um, paper towel drawing monochromatic, colourful, embossing, you name it, all sorts of different techniques. This year I'm going to stick to drawing and watercolouring or colouring of some sort, depending on what's, what the topic turns out to be. Oops, picked up the wrong one. I did clean the no, end of this nozzle out, but I'm using this glue, this responds better on paper you don't need a thick layer but you do need a fairly well spread layer over the entire surface and get it down because it's very warm here today get it down before it starts to sit and just make sure that obviously you've got the top to the top but that you don't go over the you don't go across the the fold line the score line on the hinge because that just adds bulk same so that they sort of match with the corners. I was going to put a pocket and then I thought well I really don't need a, a pocket on this. Um, I don't believe. I can always add one if I do decide. The nice thing about using the cloth with a hidden hinge is that you've got that consistency of colour right across and you've got absolutely minimal bulk at the at the spine. That one's kicking up just a little bit. Let me see what I can do to fix that. Obviously didn't get the adhesive. I've got too many adhesives out on my top. That'd probably be too much now. Just use a toothpick too. Distribute it a bit better. I'll clean that up with the, the 
trusty adhesive eraser once it's had a chance to set. Otherwise I'm just going to spread it further. There we go. Now all I have to do is to make a cover for it. And I think I'll just do a a bit of a layered up thing once I've decided. I've got these lovely uh, Japanese postcards that I thought I might use as a base. Um, one of them, I've got several, but this is one of the landscape ones of a waterfall. But I don't know, I'll just see. I might do something else. I might just do a, a collage layer of something. So that's about it. Once I decide what I'm doing for the for the front, I'll come back and show you. But once again, you can see how nice and flat it all lays. And that's aided by the fact that there's the pages each only have one, one layer. And that stops it from being too bulked up. I haven't thought about a closure for it yet. And it looks like I need to repair this little corner too, as I did that one. I'd better do that before I finish or I might not get back to it. Just a toothpick. You see that's quite loose there. Scrap paper. Under the corner, and it looks like it needs a little under the under the cloth as well. Let's get them both while we're at it. Wonderful things, toothpicks in a craft room. When they're dry, I wipe the adhesive off, and they're good to go again. There, that's got it. Well, here it is. I've finished it. I've added a black mat, a piece of uh, atlas paper, and I've printed out a world of inches and the year on a piece of cream cardstock and put that on a black mat just to finish it off. It's very plain and ordinary, but that's me, plain and ordinary. On the spine, I've printed off the same a World of Inches 2018 but I've just printed that off onto uh, some atlas paper because and and put it on a black mat simply because it wasn't wide enough to sort of layer up the mats and there's the first inchy done and dusted quite pleased with it I might embellish it more as the year progresses I might not I might put a closure on it, I'll see how it goes. I might just uh, use a hairband or tie a ribbon around it or... Not sure yet, but it's staying plain at the moment. At least it's done and it's ready and waiting for some more inches. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye now. <music>